speaking of being careful out there, Chance Patrick is joining us yeah. right now from uh, Iowa's Great Outdoors, and you brought a guest with us. I did. There's some awesome things going on for 2016. You know, I promote getting kids back outdoors, mm -hmm. but we also got to get the adults back outdoors also to get the kids to go with them. So there's a program going on this year that Dan Martin, he's the regional director for the NWTF, he's going to talk about. It's probably one of the best events that's starting up that I've heard of. And the NWTF being? The National Wild Turkey Federation with Polk County Conservation is joining on too. Um, this event, I'll let Dan tell about it, but it's, uh, it's coming on strong. All right, Dan, welcome to the show. And Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Um, we have created a collaborative effort uh, in Polk County with uh, the Polk County Conservation Board, the National Wild Turkey Federation. We are in talks with Ducks Unlimited and Pheasants Forever to create a year-long hunting program that's designed to get the uh, 18 to 45-year-old back out in the outdoors in general. Um, we found that we've missed a whole generation of people out there and as Chance said, if we don't have the adults to take the youth, the hunting tradition is going to be lost completely. So, Why do you think we've lost that? Uh, I think it was just a matter of uh, the baby boomer session. Uh, you know, you get two parents start working, um, divorce, you know, you get split parents and other things like that. People don't have time, sports, athletic events. Uh, we just missed a whole thing where that generation didn't have the opportunities that some of us did have mm. to get out in the outdoors and we're starting to see it immensely. Uh, license sales uh, across the country, the average age is almost 60 years old. Wow. So, really? I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think those numbers are a little off, or not off, but are deceiving because most states don't have youth buy permits, so they don't have to buy a permit until they're 18. Oh, yeah. Got it. So, you know, there's 10, 12, 13, 14, 16 year old kids out there hunting that don't have a hunting license. They have to buy their tags, but we don't look at tags, we look at licenses. So, anyway, we've created a year long program to introduce these people back into the outdoors. Um, they're going to do one on one time with a mentor. They're going to go through hunter's education so they can learn about it, firearm safety. Um, we're going to take them on four different hunts throughout the year. We're going to take them fishing. There's a conservation piece where they're going to get to go outdoors uh, and learn about the outdoors and why it's important to protect what's out there in general. Uh, it's a non forced thing. So if you want to go on the turkey hunt and you say, I'm not comfortable and I don't want to harvest the turkey, no problem. Take your camera. Come out mm -hmm. and sit. Enjoy the outdoors. It's a no pressure environment. Um, like I said, and it's a year long program and we find that one and done's are great. Uh, one and done is basically I take a person out hunting and that's their only touch with the outdoors mm -hmm. and then they go off on their own. This is designed to give them multiple touches and give them the knowledge so that they can continue on with that and, and, and that lifestyle. Now you said four different hunts throughout the year. Are they all turkey hunts? No, sir. Uh, we are going to do a spring turkey hunt. We're going to do a dove hunt. We're going to do a waterfowl hunt. And then we're going to have a fall turkey hunt. And then we're going to leave a deer hunt as an optional hunt for the mentor and the actual participant to work out on their own. You and I were talking uh, before the segment. I grew up in Northwest Iowa. I, I never, ever saw wild turkeys. And, and <laughs> the population uh, is has really increased in Iowa. Hasn't There's a it? lot of birds. There's a lot of birds out but there. But where are they hiding? You know, I seen yesterday a flock of probably 25 right off Highway 5. No, you didn't. I, you know, I, I try to capture pictures, but a 65 mile an hour down the road. Yeah, you'll be get, pulling your camera out. Well, I try to just get off the road and get some. But right. there was such a flock, and I'm thinking public hunting. This might be a good spot really? come spring. Mm. There was a lot of birds out there. So that's good. It gives people a lot more opportunity to go out and harvest now. Instead of a lot of people used to get frustrated, oh, turkey hunting so hard. It is tricky, but when you got 25 or 30 birds. It, mm -hmm. It's tricky because they won't let you get close to them very often. <laughs> no, no. They, they don't like movement. No, <laughs> they don't like movement at all. If uh, they say if a turkey could smell, it'd be uh, the most elusive species in, in the country. So I believe that. I have, you know, right out by me, 142nd in Aurora in, in Urbandale, eight or nine birds that I see almost every no day. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, right out of the field amazing. there. It's, yeah, it's they're so cool. Thing. They're everywhere now. The one nice thing about this program is each person have their own mentor that's, that's hunted before is going to give these people the opportunity because it's like taking a kid fishing and they don't catch fish and they're frustrated so, yeah yeah so if you take out a mentor that's that's hunted for years their chances of receiving the game at the end of the day is really good 
and the program cost a hundred dollars mm. and that's oh, covering that's your cheap. license and your tags right everything now there's a website we, we can go to if you want to get some more information on this uh, nwtf.org we'll be able to give you all the pertinent information to get you all up to speed on this no i see manager property there what what kind of environment do, do wild turkeys want to be in well but go to, the, yeah, go to the expert. Yeah, so go to the expert on that. I know what I look for. Uh, they need a place to roost, a safe place to roost, uh, nice mature trees. Tall um, trees. They need uh, pollinator species, bugs, uh, mm -hmm. other things to eat. Uh, they're going to need water. And because of uh, turkeys see amazingly well, they're going to want to have a, when they roost at night, they're going to want to be able to oversee the land. So if you've got some low ground that's got a lot of uh, dandelions, other things in it, uh, beans, things things like that that they can eat, you probably got a good spot to start turkey. Now, you I, said it, they like to roost, roost. And, and then you looked up when you said that. Yep, uh, roost how, in the how tree. How high do they roost? High. Uh, okay. they, high. High. Yeah. How high? Really? Oh, 25, 30 feet. Really? really? And no I'll tell idea. you, when you're, when you're sitting out there in the I morning didn't either. and you're starting your turkey hunt, you'll do like a fly down, like a fake wing, sound like they're flying out of the tree. When they fly out of the tree, you know they're coming. It's not like jets coming through there. You know, a turkey's a big bird. He yeah. gets to whipping them wings through them trees. You're, here he comes. You know it. And that might do that 20 times. Wow. And then it's quiet. I had no idea. I had me neither. That's amazing to me. Uh, now, do, you said the turkeys have good eyesight and uh, they, they know if you're coming. Uh, do they ever realize what's going on? Or do they ever attack the hunter or do they just take off? Uh, I, the only people that I know that have got attacked, uh, the bird wasn't uh, past its lifespan yet, okay. and they walked up and he was still <laughs> still moving around. They have nice spurs they on their legs. Spurs. That's what I thought. That, was that is your yeah. rack. Yeah, yeah. yeah they it, that's can, their, one of their defense mechanisms. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. yes, that can uh, they can cause some serious damage. <laughs> All right. So when do we uh, get signed up for this? If someone's interested in just saying to themselves, you know what, I need to try the outdoors. I need to get back out in the outdoors. When do we get started? Uh, the classes are actually going to kick off January 23rd. Is our first class. So that's like next week. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, but we're taking applicants all the way up till February. February, the end of February, February 27th is their second class. Um, so we're taking applicants. They can go on the uh, Polk County Counter. Polk County Conservation Board's website. Uh, they can go on the NWTF, uh, IANWTF.org website, which is the NWTF in Iowa, or they can go on the uh, NWTF Iowa Facebook page and find all the applications. If you want to be a mentor, if you want to be a participant, the class schedule, all that stuff is on those websites. And they can give me a call or they can give uh, Stacy Smith a call. She's our R3 coordinator for the state of Iowa and uh, or Polk County. Perfect. Wonderful. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate it. Thank you it. very much for having me. And if people want to follow along, see what Chance is up to, have any questions for him as well, just jump on Facebook, Chance that Patrick dot seven, and you'll be able to get a hold of him. Good job, man. Thank you. Have Thank a good New Year. Thank Hopefully. you very much.